This video is sponsored by Zip Top Containers. So this is my brother Dave, the guy behind the short rib grilled cheese, the fried Brussels sprouts. You've heard me talk about him. Here he is today. He's gonna help us out with something. You see, my birthday's two days after Christmas. And growing up as a kid, we'd always travel up to Albany to my grandma on my dad's side to celebrate my birthday. And when we would arrive, we'd always be greeted with pasta and meatballs and these amazing ricotta cookies. And when she passed away, all that was left of the recipe was this incomplete sheet of paper. Basically just a list of ingredients without any directions. So over the course of the last few years, my brother's been trying to kind of like reverse engineer and hack these things, figure out how to get them to taste just like grandma did, working on developing the recipe. And today he's gonna show us how to do it. So let's just jump right into it. So what happened, mom started to try and make the cookies from this recipe and they just never tasted the same. Yeah, she used to try to recreate it because grandma, and you know, if you have Italian grandmothers out there, you know that they tend to leave specific instructions or ingredients out. They give you just enough to like, think you know how it's gonna be and then whenever you try and make it, it never comes out the same. So what we found out is my mom would just add all of these ingredients into a bowl and mix them and it just never came out the right way. And a lot of it has to do with like when you add the ricotta, when you add all of the ingredients, and that's what he, Dave figured out. So I'm gonna let him roll with it. He's gonna show you how to make the cookies. And at the end of it, everyone's gonna be able to bang these out without any issues like we've had for the last however many years. You ready? Let's do it. Okay, let's go. And as always, this recipe and all my holiday recipes are gonna be in my holiday plan of attack. But look how cool it is. Somebody made this into a book and sent it to me. Maybe one day this will actually be a real book and you can buy it. Otherwise, the link's down in the description for this recipe and all my other holiday recipes. Do a right. big bulk. That's fine. All right, how do we go? So what you're gonna do is you can combine the margarine, which is about eight ounces of softened margarine. When you're getting this soft margarine out of this bowl, you have to make sure you use a spatula because you wanna get every last bit. Now the vanilla is something that was never in the original recipe. To be honest, I think grandma put that in there and didn't write it down. I mean, that's what I think. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna add your sugar. You're gonna add the eggs, but we're gonna mix this together first. You wanna whisk it and cream it together. Now you can also, if you so choose, use butter as well. Yeah, we've tried it with, I know margarine is not like a healthy option, and these cookies get made once a year, and we've tried them with butter, and they're good, but they just don't taste the same as the way Grammy used to make, so we choose the margarine. Once this looks a nice and creamy, almost looking like, a, like an icing, what you're gonna do is you're gonna slowly add each egg in. So you're gonna add one egg, and you're gonna whisk. Just gonna keep adding each one, one at a time. Make sure you're getting the edges of the bowl when you whisk. And your last egg. Now, once it's smooth like this and everything's incorporated, you're then you're gonna slowly add your flour and your baking soda, baking powder, and salt. The measurements here are one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon baking soda, and a quarter to a half a teaspoon of salt. Then slowly start to work in that four cups of flour. Don't be afraid if it looks like it's starting to get very, almost dough-like. That's what it's supposed to look like as you keep adding the flour. Almost as if it looks like it's too much flour. You're gonna be adding ricotta later, so it's gonna even back out. So you're just gonna keep incorporating slowly. And you know what? You can, you can also s switch out of the, um, yeah. out of your whisk, you know, just get all that goodness out. Now you can start getting the edges on that down. Of course, if you have like a KitchenAid, that's also great, but not everyone does. So we'll do a granny style, which is in the bowl. She didn't have a KitchenAid. No, she did it by hand like this. So now you're, make sure you get all that flour incorporated smooth like this. And now what you want to do is you want to add your ricotta. You don't want to mix it the same way that you would mix it before. What you want to do is kind of slowly, lightly just fold it in, try to incorporate 
the almost ricotta, like, almost like egg whites and pancake batter. I think why these or things, a souffle, yeah, kind of the same way. Why it didn't work when mom tried it is because she would mix it all together, including the ricotta, and it loses that fluffiness and kind of made them a little bit dense. And so just uh, let it chill at room temperature for like five minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you get some sheet trays lined with parchment paper. And what we have here is, is about a one ounce scoop. You know, you can make- Co Cookie scoop. Cookie scoop or ice cream scoop, whatever you, whatever they call it. Well, that's not, a, that's not ice cream. That's well, some you make little cute little balls of ice cream in a bowl. It's, not, it's four. You know? Anyway, like a heaping one ounce scoop within this. And then what you're gonna do is parchment paper, nothing else. And what that's gonna do is when that cooks, it's gonna spread out into a nice cookie. So this is the best way to do it. You keep it consistent. You want them all to be the same size so they all cook at the same time. It almost looks like one of those like fluffy pancakes that they make now. Yes, it looks like a fluffy pancake. So we're gonna we're about to bake them. They're gonna go into a 350 degree oven. Yeah, so 350 degrees for anywhere from 12 to 15 minutes. Now, this is dependent on what type of stove you have because everyone has a different stove. Sometimes they're not calibrated. Some so, may take 12, some may take 15, but you gotta start checking around 12 and what do you have to look for? You look, you try to lift up the cookie and if you see that there should be a light golden brown on the bottom, that's when you know they're done. The top should be pretty pale. So yeah, don't, very pale. don't expect like a, a brownness happening on top. It's gonna come together with a little golden brown crust on the bottom and the top's gonna be nice and white. Now while these cookies bake, it's gonna give us a moment to thank our sponsor today, Zip Top. Did you know the average family can use up to 2,000 plastic bags a year? Can you believe that garbage? I'm guilty of it myself, but I want to do better. And that's why I'm happy to partner with ZipTop. Made in the US, these ZipTop containers are extremely durable, microwave, dishwasher, and freezer safe. They're made with 100% platinum silicon, so they won't leach any harmful chemicals that plastics will. They're completely free of BPA, lead, PVC, and phthalates. And unlike plastic bags, they stand, they stay open, and they zip shut. You can even pour hot liquid straight into them. ZipTop was designed with the environment in mind. One ZipTop can replace up to 5,000 disposable plastic bags. That's a lot of waste you're reducing. They offer a variety of sets, sizes, and different colors, so they have something for everybody. And if you wanna give these a try, go down and expand the description box and there should be a link there where you can purchase these. And if you use the code Not Another Cooking Show at checkout, you're gonna get 15% off your order. A great offer, in my opinion, to help you reduce waste at home. So get yours today and thank you Zip Top for sponsoring this video. After about 12 minutes of baking, the cookies came out perfect. A little golden brown on the bottom and they maintain their pale top. You're supposed to be looking for something along this line you see like a light pancake like a light pancake like a pita bread it looks yeah. like a toasted pita bread or like a tortilla almost but like i said so this oven it was 12 minutes now your oven could be 13 14 it really depends so by checking it and knowing what to look for it's just it'll it'll come out great you just gotta maybe use your senses it. rather than relying on us telling you 15 minutes 13 minutes you're gonna have to just judge it a little bit yeah. but these look good what do we do let them cool what you do is you're gonna transfer them to a rack yeah we And before you ice them, they have to completely cool, right? Yes. All right. Otherwise, it'll just be all melted. Next batch, sir. All right, so while the cookie's cool, we're gonna make the icing. So. Tell us how it goes. So this is about a cup of confectionery sugar. So what makes these cookies good is that usually ricotta cookies have a really intense lemon flavor. And I don't know, maybe it's a family taste or personal taste, but we kind of like a more subtle lemon flavor. It's just how she made them. And th yeah, it's just kind of how she made them. That's sort of what, why we love these cookies. We're gonna use a little bit of lemon juice and we're gonna compensate and add water. And just that, that's all you really need right here. And you're gonna just kind of squeeze it. One, two, three. So you're then gonna add a little water. Now, if you were to use only lemon juice, then it's gonna be very lemony. We don't want that. So you could do it if you like lemon, but that's not gonna be our cookie. Now do this gradually. You can always add more you can't take out, right? So that's that's the idea. 
We ended up having to adjust this batch of frosting, but the amount of water that you should use is about a tablespoon and a half and about a teaspoon of the lemon juice. So now we're getting there, but it's still a little bit thick. So now add a little more water. So that looks good, right? So these cookies have fully cooled. They're ready to be iced. It's good to do this with someone else. Steve can help me with the sprinkles because you want to sprinkle them right after you glaze them. So they all kind of solidify together. So you had some that were coconut, which I hated. So I you'll hated never the coconut too. Coconut, but and it's, at this time of year, you can use red, white, uh, red and green Christmas holiday sprinkles that are available. But she never did. She always went with chocolate and then rainbow. And she went with chocolate when she ran out of rainbow. So but rainbow's the best. Yeah. You gotta go. You gotta go rainbow. Okay. So watch. So what we're gonna do here, just so you guys can see, is you got your glaze in the bowl. What you want to do is you want to hold it like with your fingertips kind of rub it in the top and then you want to kind of move it around so it completely coats and then it's going to drip off like that. You see how loose it is? And then you're going to place it. Once the cookies are coated with the frosting, immediately add the sprinkles. This is fun stuff to do with the kids. Get them involved, have them put the sprinkles on. The sprinkle is a grade A kid's job. Yeah, it's the fun part. Christmas music in the background, you know? And then we're just gonna let these cool until the icing has sort of seized up and hardened. So what we're noticing for the next batch is, you see how the icing didn't run all the way down the side of the cookie? That's a good sign you didn't add enough water to the icing. So the next batch of icing, we're gonna add a touch more. So let's see if this batch coats the cookies a little bit more the way we want to. Yeah, that looks better. I think I've determined what you're looking for is for when the frosting cools completely, it is the same color as the cookie. If it's too white, if you can see the frosting, you probably made it too thick. Perfect. You see how the frosting is basically the same color? That's what you're looking for. So it's taken a while for us to figure it out fully, and I think the last trick was this icing. I think the amount of water you gotta add to the icing is one and a half tablespoons, and mm -hmm. if you need a little bit more, you can scale up to that. But And now they're gonna be really good now, but if you could just get them into a cookie tin or some airtight container, a cookie tin is what she used to do, so we always like to put them in cookie tins, and you just wait a day, they're really just gonna be that much better. And then for the next week, they're just perfect because of this moist, humid, kind of cookie tin environment yeah. that sort of makes them stay fresh for a long time. All right, so Dave didn't entertain my cook, my photo shoot. He made, he was adamant about telling me that this is not the right way to store them. You can't use tissue paper. You must use wax paper. Mm -hmm. But this was nice for my photo shoot. I'll let him show you how to properly store them. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take wax paper, parchment paper, same same thing. Cut like little squares out of them. So you have a little pocket. You're gonna kind of place them. Get them on the edges. You could layer them. You could put one layer of cookie and then parchment paper and then another layer. And you're gonna put another one on top. And then you close it. So now we'll pack these up and we really won't eat them till tomorrow. But you know, we're gonna kinda see where we're at. Look at light and fluffy. It's like a ragotta cake, but it's a ragotta cookie. Mm. Good? It's good. Good. And they're gonna be even better after you, you let them sit in the tin. There you have it, ragotta cookies. All right, well, thanks for being in there. Thanks for helping us with the regard to cookies. Of course. Uh, thanks so much for my patrons scrolling up on the screen. Remember, if you're a patron, you get the digital version of this ebook for free with all of my holiday recipes. Otherwise, there's a link down in the description. You get this recipe and all my holiday stuff and exclusive content in my web portal. Just click the link down and it'll have all of the information. Thanks so much for everybody who's watching. Thanks to Dave. Thanks to our sponsor, Thank Zip Top. That's all that I have. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.